Honors Algebra 2. Today we're going to look at the fourth method for factoring and that's called the grouping method. First off, there are always going to be four or more terms in each of these problems. Your goal is to find two pairs of terms with a GCF and then group those together. So you may have to rearrange the question. It just depends on what you notice has a greatest common factor. You're then going to do a GCF for both pairs. And then you're going to uh, make sure that when you do so, the parentheses part matches exactly. And that will then be your new GCF. So basically grouping is the same thing. The GCF, you're just going to have to do it multiple times. Okay, first example, 2AK minus 6A plus K minus 3. We see four terms in this problem, none of which are like terms. Usually there is more one way to go about this, but your job is to pick two pairs of terms that you know have a greatest common factor. So I'm looking at the first term and the third term, because I'm noticing both of them had the same variable. The second term and the fourth term, I'm noticing have a GCF of a three. So your job is to make sure that you rearrange the problem if need be. Put the two terms that you know have a GCF side by side. Just like that. Okay, then your eyes are only on the first two terms. The GCF and 2AK and K is just K. So you're going to pull that out. That is your GCF. K times something is 2AK. So you're doing the same thing we've learned in the past. That should be just 2A. K times something goes here to give you back positive K and that should be just a positive one. Okay, then you're going to try the same thing with the last two terms. Negative 6a and negative 3 have a GCF of 3. One thing I'm noticing is that both of them are negative, so when the signs of those terms are the same, usually it's a good idea to use that same sign as part of your GCF. If it does not work here and it doesn't like match, then you can always go back and, and make that positive. But usually a general rule of thumb is if they both have negatives, pull that out as part of the GCF and it usually does work. Negative 3 times something is negative 6a. Well, negative 3 times 2 is going to give me a negative 6. And then I'll need my a term. Negative 3 times something is negative 3. Well, I have what I need, so I'm just going to use a 1 here. And I'm going to use a positive sign because we know that negative times positive is going to give us the negative back that we need. So right now, uh, the pieces that I'm underlining, highlighting, that part and that part, those are the GCFs from the previous step. The part that I'm highlighting or circling, notice, in yellow, Notice that those parentheses match exactly, and that's what you want to happen. When your parentheses match exactly, you know you're on the right track uh, for the grouping method. Now what happens is the yellow part that I've highlighted is common in both pieces. So what I like to do to help you see this is I'm going to throw in a little bracket. I'm going to put the minus sign in the middle to separate it. But pay attention to both of these brackets, please. And again, notice that 2a plus 1 is showing up in both of these. So now that becomes your new GCF. So I've already done GCF twice, and now I'm on the third round of a, G, a greatest common factor. Again, when the parentheses match, you know you've done these steps correctly. 
it becomes your new GCF. Let me write that down here. And then you can use parentheses or brackets. That's up to you. But your goal is to kind of keep your eyes on the first bracket. 2a plus 1 times something will give you everything here. And that's basically going to just be that k. So k is going to need to go in the first position. Then notice there's a minus sign, so I'm going to drop that down. Draw a little line here. 2a plus 1 times something is 3 times 2a plus 1. And the only thing that I've left out is that 3. 2a plus 1 is simplified. It is not an example of a GCF, a DOS, trinomial. So I know that can't, cannot be factored any further. k minus 3 is also simplified, cannot be factored any further. And so this is my final answer for question 1. 2a plus 1 times the quantity k minus 3. Quantity 2a plus 1 times the quantity k minus 3. Again, grouping will always have four or more terms. We're going to focus on four right now. You're going to find two pairs of terms that have a GCF, and you're going to group those together, write them side by side like you saw me do. You're going to do a GCF for both pairs, and then if these parentheses match, the third time I'm saying this, this is the super important part, then you know you're on the right track because now that becomes your GCF and part of your final answer. Okay, let's try number two. x to the second minus xy plus 2x minus 2y. Again, I see four terms. As I'm scanning those terms, I'm looking for greatest common factor. These two do have a GCF. They have the same variable. These two have a GCF. They have a common number. So I'm not going to rearrange this problem, but you could have. You could have chosen the first term and the third term if you want to, the second term and the fourth term, and group those. So again, there's usually more than one way to think about the problem. I'm going to leave it alone, and I'm just going to go from left to right. So I'm looking for a GCF and x squared minus xy. I notice both of these terms have a GCF or a common factor of x, so I'm going to put that in front. x times x gives me x to the second. x times something gives me negative xy, so I need a minus sign and a y. And that's pretty much it for that. Focus on the terms I've underlined in green. Both of these have a GCF. Uh, both of them have a common factor of 2. One's a positive and one's a negative. These are different signs. So what I normally do is I try a positive here and see if it works. If it does not, then I will use the opposite sign. I'll use minus. Fill in the blanks. 2 times something is 2x. That would be x. 2 times something is negative 2y. And that would be negative y. Notice again, here's how I know I'm on the right track. The parentheses match exactly. If one's not turned around, the signs are right. Positive x, positive x, negative y, negative y. And so I know that I have completed the first step correctly. Again, I'm going to throw in brackets so we can kind of look at this as two different pieces of the problem. Okay, your next step is to take the parentheses that are in common, the x minus y part, and that now becomes your GCF. All right, and then we're going to fill in the blanks. Notice the plus sign. You're going to drop it down in the middle to separate it. And you're saying x minus y times something is x times x minus y, and that would be just x. x minus y times something is 2 times x minus y, and that would be 2. And so x minus y does not simplify or factor further. x plus 2 does not either. 
And so that's how I know I can stop. That is my best answer. That's factored completely. Quantity x minus y times quantity x plus 2. Okay, we're going to try one more together for note purposes. Um, we are looking at 24b the second a. That's one single monomial term. Minus 20b squared minus 16ba plus 30b cubed. I see four terms again. Again, my goal is to always group two at a time. Um, and that is completely up to you how you handle that. You're going to scan the problem. I am looking at the 24b squared a and the 16ba. I'm noticing they have the same variables. And 24 and 16 also have a common factor. So I think I'm going to group the first and third terms together. And then the second and third, fourth terms. Okay, it's time to regroup, time to rewrite. So I'm going to have a 24, b to the second, a, minus a 16ba, okay, and then I'm going to put the negative 20b squared, and a positive 30b to the third, 30b to the third together. Okay, let's look at the first two terms. Again, I am looking for a GCF of 24 and 18, the biggest, or 16, the biggest number that divides into both of those would be 8. B squared and B have a common factor of B, and both of these have an A. And I am going to choose right now to rewrite it um, just because I like when it's in alphabetical order. So I'm going to write 8. A is in common in both, and then B to the first is in common in both. So that would be my GCF for those terms. And then fill in the blank. 8 times 3 is 24. A times something is A. Well, I have what I need, so that would just be like times 1. So I'm, I'm just going to choose not to write it. And then B times B would give me B squared. 8 times something is negative 16. That would be a negative 2. I have the A on the outside, and that's all I need, so I do not need another. And the same thing is going to happen with the B. So 8AB times negative 2 is going to give me everything I need for that term. Okay, next I'm looking at the terms in green. I notice that 20 and 30 have a common factor of 10. 10 is the biggest number that will divide into both. They do have opposite signs, so I'm going to try just the positive first to see if it works. I have a common letter B. This term has two of them and this has three. So in common, they both have two. Remember, you're always choosing the smallest power on every letter. 10 times something is negative 20B squared. So negative, or 10 times negative 2 would give me the negative 20. B squared is the GCF, and that's all I need, so I don't need any other B on the inside. And then I'm saying 10 times something is 30, and that would be a positive 3. B squared times something is B to the third. I need one more B on the inside. All right, so like you've seen me do two other times today, I'm comparing what's inside these parentheses. Notice that the first one's 3B minus 2, and the second one's negative 2 plus 3B. However, looking at the signs, 3B is positive in both of these, and the 2 is negative. So this one's just turned backwards on me, but because the signs are the same and they match, that is still um, the correct step. And so I'm going to throw in these brackets. That's still a good thing. And then we're going to pull out the new GCF. And when you're doing this step, you can write it either way. I just like when the letter's in front. So I'm going to use 3B minus 2. That is in common in both of those brackets. So that is my GCF for the last step. 
and then to finalize this, I need drop my plus sign in the middle. Notice the step above. 3b minus 2 times something goes here to make it match all of this in the first bracket. I already have this part, so I need 8ab, it looks like. 3b minus 2 times something is all of this in the second bracket. And I already have the parentheses, the binomial part. I just need the 10b squared. Okay. Now, notice this parentheses. 3b minus 2 is simplified. It does not factor. It is not or does not have a GCF. It is not a difference of squares. It is not a trinomial. It is not a sock and dock. So we're done there. For the second piece, um, I am noticing, though, that there is a common factor in 8 and 10 and in the b and b squared. So basically, I modeled this to show you what happens sometimes. This type of problem, let me grab my highlighter, this piece is not simplified. So one thing you want to do is go back, and we could have done this at the beginning of the problem. Notice in example three that all of these terms, all these numbers are even. First off, all of these terms have a B. So from the very beginning of this problem, there was actually a greatest common factor up front. Meaning I could have started this question differently by pulling out the GCF of all of those terms um, and then moving forward. Since I didn't recognize that at the beginning, what and this may happen to you as well, what you'll need to do now is drop your 3b minus 2 down because that is already simplified. Um, and then on this part, let's go ahead and do a GCF quickly just on these two. Um, both of them are divisible by 2. Both of them have a b. This is going to be a 4a, and this is going to be 2b times 5b would give you the 10b uh, squared back. And so now 2b is simplified. 4a plus 5b is already um, simplified as well. You might want to rearrange your final answer. I think I'm going to put the monomial in front, just a matter of preference here. Thank you for being patient with me because I am using a mouse right now to write these problems out. What's taking me a little longer. And this answer that I'm highlighting in green is the best answer, the absolute best answer, instead of this one that I had a second ago. This one is still in the right direction, but if I stop here, it's really not going to give me full credit. So the one that's at the end is your best choice. And make sure when you're doing your practice set that you do look for that. Um, I didn't re it didn't matter in the first example because there's not really a GCF in all four terms. Um, same deal with this one, but in example three, it, there was a common factor. And if I had noticed at the beginning, I could have um, skipped a, maybe a step here. Um, but if you don't notice it, no worries. When you get to your what you think is the answer, double check. And if you notice, oh, there is a GCF, then pull that out, rearrange your answer, and this is good. Okay, so use those three examples and your abbreviated version of notes today to help you um, with this next practice set.